What does that have to do with division of fractions, you say? Brooklyn Peterson, do you have a question? What does that have to do with division of fractions? Well, that has exactly to do with division of fractions. Because under that fraction thing, division of fractions, the rule to divide by fractions, to divide by a fraction, guess what you do? You multiply by its reciprocal. Where have we seen that word reciprocal before? Oh, we just talked about it. Okay. That means this. Uh, if I have one-fifth divided by three-eighths, one-fifth divided by three-eighths is the same thing as the first fraction stays the same. It's only the second fraction that you make its reciprocal. Okay? You change this stays one-fifth. You change the division to multiplication because we're multiplying by the reciprocal of 3 eighths, which is 8 thirds. And then it becomes a multiplication problem, and then it's done just like what we did two seconds ago. 1 times 8 is 8, and 5 times 3 is 15. It doesn't make a lot of sense because we don't think in those terms. Uh, like, for example, um, 1 half divided by, um, well, one-fifth. If I asked you to do that, if I asked you to do that without doing the whole process there, what would you tell me? What is your guess one-half divided by one-fifth? And what you're asking somebody is this, how many one-fifths can you get out of a half? If you did the picture of that, Okay, here's my circle. I have half of the circle. How many one-fifths can I get out of that? Well, let's look at what, if I had the same circle, what's one-fifth look like? One-fifth is probably something like this. How many of these one-fifths can you get out of that? Now, here's where it'll all come clear to you. Think about money. What's a half a dollar? How much? Fifty cents, right? What's a fifth of a dollar? 20 cents. How many 20 cents can you take out of 50 cents? You get two whole ones, because that would give you 40 cents, and then half of another one, because you get 10 more cents left over, which is half of 20. So the answer should be two and a half. Well, if I do this, what's my rule for doing this? Flipping and multiplying, I get one half times five over one. Guess what I get? Five halves, which is two and a half. Just like asking you this question, if you went home and asked your parents this question, most of them would, would get this wrong. You said, Mom, what is eight divided by half? Most of them will say four, and that's way wrong, because that's not what, that's not, that's one, eight times one half, actually. You are asking, how many halves can you get out of eight? If you had eight pies and cut them all in half, how many halves would you have? The answer to this is 16. Why? Because 8 over 1 divided by 1 half is the same as 8 over 1 times 2 over 1. There are 16 halves. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You guys starting with 8 and you want to know how many halves you can get out of it. Count them up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 16. Halves. 8 divided by 1 fourth is how many 1 fourths can you get out of 8? Isabel? How many one-fourths can you get out of it, Isabel? Thirty-two. How many one-tenths can you get out of eight? Eight divided by one-tenth is, Lady Kavai? Eight divided by one-tenth? Eighty. 
It doesn't, sometimes that doesn't make sense, but that is exactly what it is. Uh, by the way, oh, okay, well, they'll ask you that. I mean, they'll ask you questions like this. How many two-thirds are in one? What is that asking you? It's a division problem. How many two-thirds are in one? That is one divided by two-thirds. How many two-thirds are in one? James Shute, how many? Um, one. one and a half. If you flip it over, it's three halves. Is everybody excited about that? Yes. Now, we are going to flip it in because I'm going to take one more giant step here because it's all the same thing. What about when you deal with mixed numbers? Anybody know what I'm going to say? Mixed numbers are done the same except what has to happen. Emily? What did you say? Did you say this? You need to make mixed numbers what? What do we call it? Make them improper. And it doesn't sound like a nice thing to do. It's never nice to be improper. Don't be improper with your parents. But with mixed fractions, you certainly can do that. That just simply means this. If you're given 2 and 1 half and asked to multiply it by 3 and 1 third, okay, everybody look up here, please. Even if I lost you a long time ago, I've seen this happen all the time. Kids will sit there and go, oh, the answer to that is 6 and 1 6. Because they multiply the whole numbers together, they multiply the fractions together. Don't do that, please. Don't make me go there. That's not following the rules. You have to make them improper, which means what? 2 and a half becomes, remember this from last year? Multiply by 2, add the 1. This becomes 5 halves. This becomes 3 times 3 is 9 plus 1, 10 thirds. Once they're improper, then you can do the multiplication. You end up with 50 over 6. I guess we should have cross-canceled there. 2 goes into 2 once into 10 five times. 25 thirds, which, if you're making it back to a mixed number, is 8 and 1 third. That's not what we got when you did 2 times 3 is 6 times that is 1 6. Don't even come close to that. Is that nice? Is that what I'm saying? I thought you could probably handle that. You are a above average mathematics in your class. And I don't just say that because I feel like I have to. Let's do one more division thing. What if I did this mixed number division? 7 and 1 third divided by 2 and 1 half. Go ahead and do that for me. Again, you must change to improper before you do anything else. Don't make it, don't take its reciprocal until you flip it and make it improper. Once you've done the improper thing, then and only then are you allowed what's seven and a third, two and a half. Seven, one third, two, one. We can't get the right answer here right off the proverbial edge. Step number uno, make him put that. Step number two, flip multiply by reciprocal. Step number three, simplify. Taking this one step at a time, uh, Riley, what did you get when you made them improper? Let's start with that. We got 22 over 3. 22 over 3 divided by? Divided by 5 over 2. 5 over 2. Hopefully you all got that far. Then Riley says the next step I did was? I put, uh, I made 5, took its reciprocal and then multiplied it by 22 over 3. Flip this one so you should have multiplied by 2 fifths. 
this point, you look and see, is there something I can cross cancel? There's not. They don't have common factors in variety. When you multiply, do you end it up with? 44 fifteenths. 44 fifteenths. That's a pretty fraction. Which you change back to a mixed number, which was? 2 and 14 fifteenths. 2 and 14 fifteenths. Stop me there if that did not make any sense, or you did not get that, or you can have questions somewhere there. This is stuff we did much time in sixth grade. And you're not sixth grade, so I didn't want to insult your intelligence. 